Well, let's talk about the book of Revelation. If you've joined us at Stillwater's Church, you know that we've been going through the book of Revelation in this series called The Lamb, the Lion, and the Warrior King. And what we've learned about the book of Revelation is that it is about Jesus. And it's about a person, not events. And you get blessed when you put Jesus at the center of everything you do. And it's comforting. And I know some people that have heard the book of Revelation taught or read the book of Revelation, you're kind of scared of it. Well, understand that there are different types and styles of literature in the Bible. And the book of Revelation is what is called apocalyptic literature. And so um, understand that what you read in there is a comfort when you understand that Jesus wins and that Jesus brings justice. Think about this. Think about the evil, sinful governments of the world that oppress their people, that martyr Christians. Aren't you glad that one day God's going to hold them accountable? That Jesus will bring justice? That that will be no more? Well, I am. And the same is true about judging Satan and the unholy trinity, the, the beast, the false prophet, and the antichrist. Um, we're glad that God's going to put Satan in hell. He's going to put him in the lake of fire. So he brings judgment. He brings justice. And so that is how we understand um, that it is a blessing when we read it. Well, one, one of the things I want to talk to you about today is explaining the great white throne judgment. And that's found at the end of the book of Revelation. And so if you look at the, the events that have happened in that book, it talks about Jesus. He gives these letters to these warnings, encouragements to churches, seven literal churches. And then he talks about how the Father should be worshipped, how Jesus should be worshipped. And then he goes through and shows us that he wins, that he brings judgment against false religion, against evil, against Satan. And at the very end, he comes back and he reigns. But then at the very end of time, he holds people accountable. And he judges uh, those anti-Christ, uh, sinful governments, events, people, etc. So we're going to read about that. Um, that is different than the judgment seat of Christ. The great white throne judgment is what sinners go through. People that reject Christ, uh, the devil, etc. Um, what Christians go through is something completely different. It says it's called the judgment seat of Christ. He said, well, what's the difference? Well, as we're going to see, one is judged according to their works, and then another is judged uh, with the value of what they're going to receive. So one is judged by what they do, and then one is judged with, with the value of the reward that they're going to get. Completely different things. So uh, Revelation 20 Verse 1, then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain. And he seized the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. In case you didn't know who he was talking about, he's talking about the devil, Satan. And he threw him into the pit and shut it and sealed it over him so that he might not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were ended and after that, he must be released for a little while. So Jesus is going to be ruling the millennial reign of Christ. And then the devil is going to be sealed into the bottomless pit. And then after the reign of Christ, physically here on this earth, he will be loose for a little while. And then I saw thrones and seated on them were those to whom the authority to judge was committed. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God. These are martyrs. And those who had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received the mark on their foreheads or their hands. And they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. And the rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. And this is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and they will reign with him. For a thousand years. So we see there the resurrection, the millennial reign of Christ, the fact that we're going to rule and reign. He makes us a kingdom of priests and a kings uh, of kings uh, that reign of rulers. 
and uh, we're going to be a part, we're going to take part in what Christ does. Uh, and then when the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. Their number is like the sand of the sea. And they marched up over the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city, I'm talking about the new Jerusalem, but fire came down from heaven and consumed them. See, Jesus is not going to play around. He's like, nope, not even a battle. Boom, there's the judgment. Fire comes down and consumes them. And the devil, who had deceived them, was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet were, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So you have here this picture of eschatology, of things to come, that, um, that Satan will be bound, Jesus will rule in that millennial reign, the resurrection will happen. Uh, if you're a believer, you're going to be resurrected to a, a Christ-like body, a resurrected body, a glorified body, and we're going to rule with him. Satan will be released for a while, and then Jesus will finally defeat them once and all, those that are anti-Christ, false religion, uh, all evil, the devil himself, and they're going to be thrown into the lake of fire. And then notice the judgment, the, the great white throne judgment. This is as we're entering into eternity, God judges those who are anti-Christ, those that have rejected Jesus Christ. And then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. From his presence, the earth and sky fled away. And no place was found for them. In other words, they could not hide. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were open. And then another book was open, which is the book of life. So anyone not found in the book of life was going to be cast into the lake of fire, as we see. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what they had done. Now think about this. This is incredibly important because most people... They think that they're made right with God by what they do. You ask the average person in America today, and they'll tell you the way you go to heaven is by being good. You keep the Ten Commandments. It's what you do. But the Bible says that only the lost are going to be judged by what they do. In other words, you're not depending on God's grace. You're not depending on the finished work of Jesus Christ. As a believer, I'm depending on what Jesus did, not on what I do. And so if you reject Christ, you're going to be judged according to what you do. And no matter how good you are, you fall short. The Bible says all have sinned, all fall short of God's glory. So that's how these people are judged. And, um, then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And anyone, anyone's name was not found written in the book of life. He was thrown into the lake of fire. This is the final judgment, the second death. And so the great white throne judgment is where God judges those that have rejected Christ and they get cast into the lake of fire. So that's for lost people. But then... In contrast, the judgment seat of Christ is for believers. If you're a follower of Jesus, you're not going to go through the great white throne judgment, but rather you'll go to the judgment seat of Christ. And 2 Corinthians 5.10 says this, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And he's talking to believers, every one of us, so that each one, notice the difference, the lost at the great white throne judgment were judged according to what they had done what was written in the books, what was recorded about them. But then for believers, so that each one may receive what is due. That is completely different. What God is going to do for us at the judgment seat of Christ um, is not judgment, but reward. We're going to receive, can you imagine this? That not only does God's grace and mercy save you, and give you entrance into heaven and keep you from going to hell. But he is going to reward you for the things that you have done in your body, whether good or evil. So there you have it. The contrast between the great white throne judgment and the judgment seat of Christ. 
The great white throne judgment is for non-believers. It is for evil. It is for false religion. It is for the devil himself. And all those there will be cast into the lake of fire because they're going to be judged according to what they did. And then for believers, we're going to receive what is due according to what we did. In other words, we're going to be rewarded for our actions because we put our faith in Christ. We're not depending on our goodness to save us, but we live in God's grace. And therein lies the difference. So I hope you'll understand that and uh, let that be an answer for you. The difference between the great, th- the great white throne judgment and the judgment seat of Christ. Well, I love you. I hope you have a great day. And um, share this video with someone. Um, Share all these videos uh, that you will encourage someone, help them to understand the book of Revelation. God bless you. I love you. Hope to see you this Sunday.